Welcome everybody to the National Basketball Arena for the Under 19B Pinergy All-Ireland Schools Cup Final between Laurel Hill from Limerick and Colossia Alec Letterkenny. I'm Conor Meany. I'm joined by Matt Hall. Matt, we've had an exciting day so far with two great finals. This one should be a step up again and uh, an exciting game to look forward to. Yeah, it promises to be a really good game actually. Laurel Hill haven't been here for a couple of years. They were in a final three or four years ago. Um, firstly, I'll obviously apologise for my uh, Irish pronunciations on the way here. I'm looking at a lot of Irish names, um, but certainly uh, Shannon Cunningham, just a recent Player of the Month award winner as a quick start. She'll be a player to look out for on the one side. And uh, a few Laurel Hill names, Alex, uh, Alexa McKinry, Emily Dickinson and Janaz Zundel. They'll be ones to look out for in the early goings here. Yeah, so a great start. Uh, Anya Nikiola in touch with the first basket of the day. At least you can claim that you're not from Ireland originally when you butchered the names, but I've nothing to say, so we'll give it our best shot. But, Matt, obviously club players on both teams, a uh, few Limerick Celtics players for Laurel Hill, and then, as you mentioned, likes of Cunningham who are already playing National League um, up in Letterkenny it, it should be a really high standard game yeah we've seen that already look a good nice out of bounds play there the open shot doesn't go but we've seen uh, a good start from both teams and uh, yeah certainly for, for a game of uh, uh, under 19s B both teams have a good bit of experience so we're expecting a, a fairly good high standard but uh, explosive game here uh, the zone defense causing problems there and it ends up being a travel on the fast break but we've seen uh, Klaus Adelig starting in a 2-3 zone here they have Cunningham in the middle who is an imposing presence and Laurel Hill are going to have to break that down They're find the ball inside nice jump shot from the top but it doesn't fall there's a good opportunity for Yana Zundel. But Clash it. Alec have the ball here through Cunningham, but she's not going to be given any space at all. You can see, obviously, there's good coaches and she's already crowded out. Yeah, I know uh, Lauren Hill are very wary of her, and you see there straight away as soon as you got inside the three point line. Two players guarding her. But so far, uh, the zone from Clash to Alec has proved um, very good. Another hand on the ball there, and so far Lauren Hill have, have failed to be able to break it down and get a, a, a good shot. Yeah, so good defense has been the story of the game outside of that first mid-range jump shot. And it's 5.50 to go in the first quarter, so a nervy start by both teams, but not unexpected as they travel up to the National Basketball Arena. And we'll see if Laurel Hill can do anything against this zone. They've been trying to attack through the high post. They try it again there, but no pass is available. And it's a turnover that leads to a fast break. Nice Euro step. Pass doesn't finish. But an open shot from the top. Doesn't go. You can see the defensive pressure this time is extended up the floor. So low scoring early start, but both teams feeling their way into it. Tough turnaround shot there for Laura Hill, but leads to a open shot. Just doesn't fall for Holly O'Neill. And it's down the far end. Contested shot. And but Matt, it's, it's up and down. There hasn't been many whistles and uh, no, not many scores either, but it, it looks like it's going to be a frenetic pace. Yeah, and I think this full court pressure as you see the first score of the game go in there. I, for Laura Hill, it's uh, Roisin Ryan. I actually think it helps Lauren Hill with a bit of full court pressure and that broken up play. They look to struggle to try and break down the zone a little bit. But once the game opened up a little bit, they were a lot easier to get the ball down the court and find a little bit more space. Yeah, so there's the first points of the game for Shannon Lee Quinnigan. As we said, definitely one to watch out for the player of the month last month in the Women's Division 1 League, which is high standard basketball. But a good contest on the back of that zone. So, Josh Dalek with the ball. They're, gonna, they're playing against 
and what looks like it's a box and one defense so for anyone who doesn't watch as much basketball it's four players are marking an area one person is marking man to man against an individual and that individual is Shannon O'Quinnigan who's going to get lots of attention at Matt as you said Tommy Walsh is obviously someone you're very familiar with and is a high level coach so he's going to be prepared uh, when you come up against a player like this he's going to ha have his homework done yes he's been putting up not only big numbers but another great score then uh, again from uh, from Ryan but they've come with it with a plan uh, like I said a lot of these played in the under 16 final a few years ago so they'll be used to playing up here or, or, or rather would understand what it's about and yeah having a, having a plan for someone who's been playing as well as, as Sharon Cunningham this year um, is key. But it'd be interesting to see on, on the flip side of that what Klaus Charlie uh, have in terms of a plan because obviously they would have come into it knowing that she would get a lot of attention. Um, so far they've been able to generate quite a few open shots. They've not been going in but they've had no shortage of uh, ball movement and, and open looks from uh, a, a lot of different players. And as you said, the ref certainly let them play a little bit. Yeah, it's been physical and relentless we have one foul so far with just over three minutes to go a nice break there for Laurel Hill but doesn't go and it's a fast break down the far end and it's a potential three point play so really good that's uh, Shauna Newegan who went all the way to the basket we've seen her attack in transition a couple of times and at that time she was able to finish and draw contact so a, bi a big play early on yeah nice finish off the backboard uh, rightly call the foul there so she has a chance for a three point play and that will settle the nerves a little bit as well because you know when you're just getting jump shots and they're not going in it can sometimes be a bit nerve wracking but it's nice to get something going to the basket and to be honest now we're uh, five minutes into the game I think both teams have kind of settled a little bit now and uh, over this next three minutes of the quarter hopefully we'll see what both teams are about Emily Dickinson just checking out of the game and Angel Alfred checks into the game so it is seven to four here. Laurel Hill again through that high post attack, but the rebound goes to Shannon, and she goes the length of the floor. Matt, it's that little bit of ability where, as you're approaching contact, she's able to sweep through and avoid contact and finish really strongly. Yeah, and that will be something that Laurel Hill can't really allow to happen. Her going full court, and they had bodies back, and here we go again. Same thing. Again, she gets to the basket and scores, and that's going to be concerning for, for coach Tommy Walsh. I think he's looking to call a timeout down there, but that's something they can't see allowed to happen, and that quick seven points in a game that started off quite slow will be a uh, big difference in the end of the game. Yeah, so we have our first time out of the floor. We'll be back in just a moment. So welcome back. We've got 2.12 to go in the first quarter here in the Under-19B All-Ireland Schools Cup Final. Laurel Hill from Limerick just trailing. Klaus Alec, Letterkenny, 11 points to four. So Matt, as we've kind of touched on, Shannon Quinnigan, a really talented player and she has the ability to go the length of the floor. She's at the back of that zone which allows her to pick up rebounds and she then can run the length of the floor and finish and we've seen that a couple of times already. Yeah, and I'm sure that's what Tommy Wall was talking about in the timeout. Just making sure they get bodies back and stop her early before she gets a chance to get to the basket. Uh, don't let her affect the game too much. I mean, it's a difficult ask coming into it, but I think they can't afford to give up those fast break layups to her. Um, and it's a shot clock violation. Yeah, shot clock violation. So Laurel Hill have 
found it difficult to break down the zone and when you have a player at the back of the zone that maybe is a little bit intimidating for you what can you as a coach be kind of emphasizing to your players in terms of moving the ball and trying to attack gaps in that zone yeah well you, you saw out that time out there they came out with a little bit of a plan um, trying to go through the high post a little bit they took a little bit too long about it but obviously another great move there uh, and this is a, this is I think is their best option is in the open court when things broken play a little bit they need to start hitting those but uh, and they've left Sharon up front yeah that's a killer there for Laura Hill so an opportunity in transition for them doesn't fall and all of a sudden it's a nine point gap as Shannon New Queen going gets another basket yeah, trying to expose the wings in, in, in the zone and uh, I think Holly O'Neill can be a good shooter for them as well she's on the wing at the moment but just trying to make these open shots in order to give themselves a little bit of confidence but they've gone a little while without scoring here so they're in desperate need of a basket and it's a turnover there so the ball stolen away by Kayleigh Nee Engesa who has the ball at the top Shannon Nee Quinnigan and it's a wide open shot from the top, doesn't fall, but offensive rebound and true contact and a great finish there again by Shannon Quinnigoyne. Matt, at this sort of level, the ability to finish through contact, even underage in general, there's not a lot of players who are able to finish so competently through contact and you can clearly see that Shannon's been playing against uh, adults for, uh, for Letterkenny in the league, so it's a big difference. Yeah, and, and that is the difference. I mean, Laurel Hill do have a lot of club players, but it's the National League standard that she's playing out week in, week out. would be used to the level of contact. would be used to, to trying to find gaps when the game is a lot faster, and you've seen that in the earlier. E even the couple of misses she's, she's had already, she's been able to get right to the basket. And uh, she's really taken over this game at the moment. Yeah, so 16-4, 35 seconds to go in the first quarter here. The under-19B All-Ireland Schools Cup final and a steal by Nikwinagoyne. She's going to push it, gets back to that right hand, but ends up traveling. So, a good job by Laurel Hill getting back in transition, and they're able to force a stop. I think it was Alexa McInerney herself who got back in front of Nikwinagoyne. Yeah, just this last 16 seconds, Laurel Hill really need a score. Just to give them a little bit of a confidence to go into the end of the first quarter. And that's a lovely offense and a lovely finish inside. So great patience there. Lovely find by Angel Alfred. Looks inside and a, a great basket to finish out this first quarter. But it's Clash Alec who lead Laurel Hill 16 to 6 after one. So welcome back to the National Basketball Arena in Tala. Glasgow Alec lead Laurel Hill 16-6 to after the first quarter. So Matt, for Laurel Hill, what do they really have to try and emphasise now at the start of the second quarter to try and get themselves back into this? Protecting the basket, uh, uh, Kalosha Ali ha haven't made a jump shot yet. Um, I think on the fast break, they've allowed the ball to get all the way to the basket. Um, uh, and it's really been one person at a the time. They really need to double up, make sure there's no gaps. 
stopping the ball outside and making sure that they have to make jump shots, um, which is which is exactly what Klosh had done to uh, to Laurel Hill themselves. So it's a little bit stagnant here for Klosh on offense. They're going to have an open shot from the corner if they want it, but nice drive, but it's a turnover. So that's a good defensive stop. Coach Tommy Walsh will be delighted with that. It's only a 10-point game. We've seen big runs already in games already today, so there's still plenty for Laurel Hill here as Alexa McInerney brings the ball down the floor. This time they find her in the corner. Already, Matt, that's a little bit of an adjustment. You saw the uh, Alexa McInerney pass to the wing and then relocated to the corner where she got an open look. It's going to be a case of whether they can knock down shots from the perimeter. Yeah, exactly that. And, you know, I, I think that's something they've got to do. They've got to take the chances. They're not going to get right down the middle or get anything easy just because of the level of defense of Sharon Cunningham in the middle. She's not going to leave that middle un undefended. So I like the adjustment there. You've got to take those shots. And... Uh, and in fairness, they've got a couple of players that are well, make, well capable of, of making those shots. So hopefully for them, a couple will go in and we can get a slightly closer game here. Yeah, so Klaus Haddock moved the ball. Nice bounce pass inside. Nice left-hand finish as Cunningham cut to the basket. So 18-6 to six here. Laurel Hill moving a little bit more, but try to find a short corner. They do there, move it back up to the perimeter. Step through, a lot of bodies, but a foul's drawn. So it's going to be a trip to the free throw line. And Matt, that's good. It's, uh, they move the ball side to side, and Emily Dickinson ends up getting the ball and attacks the gap. And sometimes when you have someone at the back of that zone, you have to really go at them as well. You can't just be uh, kind of passive with them. Yeah, exactly. Em Emily Dickinson's a, a very good player in her own right, very capable of getting down the middle of the lane. So they've got to be aggressive. They've got to. They've got to really uh, go for it a little bit. I suppose defensively, just they just need to stay a little bit more alert. They fall asleep a few times, and when they do, Cunningham is always in the right place at the right time. But they do a good job this time of getting a rebound. Yeah, Yana Zandel picked up that rebound, and she's contesting this one underneath the boards as well. And a lovely pass as well. Doesn't fall. And with these opportunities, when you're trailing by 12, you really have to come up with some points from that sort of play, but they're going to try and get a stop here. They're in that zone defense again, trying to force Clash Alley to shoot from the perimeter, who do, but it's again a good rebound, and Laurel Hill are out to the races. But unfortunately, it's a turnover there. Holly O'Neill looked to try and find uh, Zundel inside, but wasn't able to get it, and Cunningham plays through the contact, but then a bit of a frustration foul for her. Only the second foul of the game for Clash Dalek. Only the sixth foul overall. So, as you've said, a lot of physicality. The referees let them play through a lot, and both teams are playing in zone. So, Laurel Hill moving the ball side to side against the zone. Good attack inside. But a good contest by Clash Alec and they get the rebound and they push the ball up the floor through Sean and Wigan. Yeah, Laurel Hill just try, need to try and make a few of those opportunities stick at the moment. They've uh, got a few offensive rebounds that they've not been able to finish. Claude and Sheeran found Kaylee Niangasa for that shot, but it just didn't fall. So 18 6. Defensively, Laurel Hill are, are doing a solid enough job, but six points just isn't enough. They have to find a way to create some offense. As they move the ball here again, tough contested shot. And Clash to Alec are out attacking them again. The pace of the game has slowed down here a bit, Matt, uh, noticeably from those early fren uh, frenetic uh, couple of minutes. And just, yeah, just as we say that, we have a fast break score and we're going to have a timeout, so we'll be back in just a moment.
So welcome back. 18-8. A nice fast break score there by Laurel Hill. And it's just a 10-point game. So Matt, there's been good signs in the second quarter for Laurel Hill. Uh, they're kind of eating away at that lead, but they need to find some more consistent offense if they're going to really get back into this. Yeah, de defense is done a good job. Um, I'd like to see that, uh, I think for the most part, it's normally uh, Alexa McKinley that's staying as she is at the moment with, with Sharon Cunningham. We see a little bit more action this time in order to get her open. And results in a good score. So <laughs> what I was going to say was they were doing a good job, but they needed to stop her catching the ball. And we also see a bit of full court pressure as well, so they really up the tempo. But I actually think this might suit Laurel Hill a little bit because they're really struggling against that zone when they've got to break it down when they're right back compact. So this should buy a little bit more space as we get a turnover there, unfortunately. Yeah, tough pass. Tried to find inside. And it's been Shannon Nukwini going all game long. And Matt, even in transition, Laurel Hill, it's constantly, she's going to that right hand in transition and finishing on the right hand side. They need to do a, a, try and get their body in front of that side of her body, at least make it a little bit more difficult for her. Yeah, they're just they're trying to defend her one at a time, so she beats one, another one comes, whereas they really need to double up as a team, make sure that they, she's got to get through a, a wall of bodies type thing to get to the basket. And, and as I said, I, I don't think Colossia really, uh, really have a, a jump shot made yet. And I don't think either team has a jump shot made yet in, in, in that respect. So. It's definitely the way forward, but easier said than done, I suppose, when you play against someone with this kind of talent. Yeah, Sinead Nick Atsor with the rebound there, but they end up in a travel. So Laurel Hill have a jump shot there through Alexa McNerney, but it doesn't fall. And when both teams are struggling in the half court, when you have someone like Shannon Nick going able to create so much offense and transition, it really is a, a difference maker in these sort of games. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure how many of the 22 she's got. She's probably got at least 16 at this point, but definitely it's a huge difference just being able to score on the break. You see the same play here, run across the baseline. A well-executed offense just doesn't fall. And here's an opportunity for Laurel Hill. The Quinnigoin is out of position, so they have to attack inside. They try to get it inside, but again, the pass just doesn't come off. And it leads to a turnover back. In transition to that right hand, doesn't finish though this time. And Laurel Hill are surviving here, mainly through their defense. That's yeah, it's kind of by the skin of their teeth, isn't it? You feel like they could probably still get back into it at this point if they could make a few jump shots, but it, it's becoming tougher. And with scores like that in the fast break, it's looking more and more difficult for them. Yeah, left hand finish there that time. And the defensive pressure extends up again. Looking for a potential trap here, which they get, but Laurel Hill survive it. So 24 to 8, but there we go again. Another turnover out in transition. We've seen this before. Bit of contact, left hand finish, but that's the simple thing that we were talking about, Matt, earlier on in the game. That would have been right back to the right-hand layup and a little bit better there in transition defense. Yeah, got a body in front of the ball. Made a good defensive stop. Resulted in a missed left-hand layup. Tough one. It goes, but I've got a timeout here called for Lois. Yeah, rushing run just short there, so we'll be back in just a moment.
So welcome back. 1.19 to go in the second quarter of the under 19 B Pinergy All Ireland Schools Cup. If you're tuning in and following along on social media, make sure you tag Basketball Ireland and use hashtag Pinergy Schools Cup if you want to be involved in the conversation. Laurel Hill trailing here by 16 points. Nice move inside, a turn around jump shot. And that is lovely work there by Sean and Wigan. So it's an 18 point game with Matt and we're already into kind of danger time for Laurel Hill. They have to try and get a basket before this first half ends if they're going to have a chance to get back into it. Yeah, I, I, personally I'd like to a bit more of that. I'd like to see them have a little confidence, take some jump shots. They can hit jump shots. So taking the open jump shots and try and get it find it so they can try and find a little bit more space inside in the zone. Um, but as we've seen in a million of these schools cup finals, when things aren't going for you, confidence can go very quickly. Um, and, and especially the way they've been leaking baskets underneath. It could be a tough way back for them, but again, it's, it's not dead and buried for them. There's a foul there. Um, Sinead Nikatsur. So a lot of subs in there as well for Klaas to Alex. So although we've obviously been paying a lot of attention to Shandy Quinnigoyne, there is a bit of depth there to, and it's a well-organized team, well coached there by Linda Nikengisa. Seven seconds to go here in the first quarter. An opportunity to finish out the half on a positive note for Laurel Hill. Doesn't go. And at the end of the first half of the National Basketball Arena, Klaas to Alex lead Laurel Hill 26 points to eight. We'll be back in just a few minutes.
So welcome back to the National Basketball Arena. It's Klasha Alec who lead Laurel Hill 26 points to 8. Matt, very deserving of that lead. They've been excellent in the first half, very compact defensively, and then have gotten out on the fast break and really finished strong. Yeah, they have been. They have been deserving of the lead. They've run some nice stuff. I mean, jump shots haven't gone too much. We see one almost here, but it, interesting enough, Sean Cummings on the bench. So if Laurel Hill can maybe get the next four, as you see a step through there, four, six points, it would just make them, give them a little bit of confidence and maybe make her come back into the game. The other thing is half time it's only three minute get, uh, half time in these uh, school games so it's very difficult to change the mindset uh, get a bit of composure for the players they're under a lot of pressure here so it'll be tough but uh, this first couple of minutes will will really dictate how they go confidence wise for the rest of the game i think it's 19 points in that first half for shannon b quinnigan but it's even with her off the floor that's great defense but there's a lovely move inside for Laurel Hill yeah and a, a, a good shot from Holly O'Neill and, and she followed the shot got her own rebound uh, so it wasn't Holly O'Neill it's it it Dickinson see. again Dickinson yeah so it just like just taking the jump shots I think you've got to you've got to try and keep moving the ball get the open jump shots and uh, you know if one or two of them fall it will make a big difference but also you see it just gives you a chance to get an offensive rebound and in that offensive rebound it pulled uh, it pulled the defense away from the basket a little bit and allowed her to get to the basket and, and get a free uh, get fouled and score and good defense there yeah it's a good start for Laurel Hill two two good stops and a score so it'll be interesting to see if they if they get another score here if there's changes but cer certainly we've seen from Kolosha Ali, Ali We'll, we'll get there eventually <laughs> that uh, they are a little bit more than just just Shannon Cunningham they've played some nice basketball but I mean they've had their struggles as well shooting the ball so anything can happen in these games yeah that one just doesn't fall for Holly O'Neill so it's going to be Klasha Alec ball but a turnover is forced and here's an opportunity for Laurel Hill they really have to get down before that defensive set, but Klaus Alec do an excellent job in defensive transition there, get back and clog up the middle, and it leads to a turnover again, and we're seeing the impact of Shaunani Wigan quite a lot in this game. She's had lots of loose balls end up with her, and she goes for a shot there, but it's blocked. A nice block there by the captain of Laurel Hill, Jana Zundel. Yeah, you picked it there. A little bit of hesitancy from uh, Alexa Mc uh, McInerney when she got the steal. I just think they need to be a little bit more forceful. Another good defense and a stop there, but they just they need something on the break easy rather than having to keep breaking down this good zone. It's good defensive pressure. Nothing easy coming there. It's going to end up being a long three, which is, hits off the back of the ring, but a good offensive rebound. And now Dickinson gets into the lane, doesn't fall, but another potential offensive rebound. She gets her own rebound. Shots just aren't falling. That's a lovely pass, though. And again, it just doesn't fall. And it's starting to feel like one of those days offensively for Laurel Hill, uh, Matt, that some days the basket just <laughs> looks a lot smaller. Yeah, and we see that a lot in the, in the big games here, the nerves a little bit as well. But certainly they seem a little bit more confident shooting the ball. Um, <laughs> I suppose... It's a bit strange to be saying they're getting closer in a, in a game like basketball, but certainly it does feel like they're a little bit better. But now it's here, it's getting their head up and, and getting an outlet quickly. And there we see it, but it's just forced a little bit. And a great job defensively to get back in transition. And the last thing that Laurel Hill want to see is what's just happened as Shannon Quinn going checks back into the day, uh, game for Annie Nick Yella Intwig. A good head fake but a good recovery by Laurel Hill and it's going to be a jump ball so with the possession arrow it's Laurel Hill's ball and Matt overall it has to be said Laurel Hill are doing an excellent job defensively in the half court if you take out those transition points you really are probably down to only 12 or 14 points that uh, Klaus Alec have managed to score yeah that's it and I suppose it's a little bit of 
concentration as well. I mean, if, if you could show the girls the scores that they've given up on the fast break, I'm sure they feel they could have made it a little bit more difficult. But again, Sharon has been exceptional on the break. It's been very difficult. But you're, you're exactly right. Defensively, when both teams have been back on defence, it's been exceptionally difficult for either team to score. The difference has been on the fast break and just the points that Kolosha Aliga have been able to score on the fast break as they go again here. Here we see another fast break. Doesn't fall, but good patience. Ball's moved around and captain of Laurel Hill yet again with another rebound. She's done amazing work on the boards. That's Yana Zendel. She, this time she gets the ball inside, but she's crowded out. But she draws a foul. So the foul there on number 13, which is Kaylee Nukengasa. So Yana Zendel will head to the line for two shots. Matt, she's been battling really hard on both ends. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities because of the defense being so compact. Yeah, it's been tough work inside. She's doing a great job defensively on the rebounds. There's a nice strong move there. Going to the basket, got the foul. Again, these free throws here. Just trying to make one or two of those. Give them a little bit of confidence. But again, amazingly, like both teams, I still don't think either team have made, it, made a, a, a jump shot in the game, which is very unusual. Um, but I suppose that results in, in where we have a fairly low scoring game at the moment. Yeah, that foul was on Kaylee Nikangusa, which is her fourth foul of the game. So that's a little bit of a worry for uh, Linda Nikangusa, the coach of uh, Kloster Alec. But it's <laughs> any worries that she has are kind of laid to rest there by Kaylee Nikangusa. Then coming down the far end and hitting another shot. So the lead is now 18 points. 3.38 to go in this under-19B All-Ireland Schools Cup final. Laurel Hill attacking into the same lovely pass inside. And Matt, that's probably the best offense that they've had. They attacked the high post, draw, drew attention, and then found the, the big uh, person underneath the basket for an easy lay. -up. Yeah, a bit of aggression. There's no point in just uh, dying one doing so. Get down the lane. Nice pass inside. And in the opposite direction, we saw a jump shot go in. So that, that hopefully will free things up a little bit from both sides and good defence again there from Laurel Hill as we've got a few changes down below us. Yeah, two subs coming into the game for Clash to Alec. We have Megan Kjernikoyne who's checking into the game and she's also joined by Claude Nishiroin as Michaela Nigalikor sits down. So it's another corner three for Laurel Hill, just doesn't fall. Yana Zundel battles for that rebound and it's going to stay possession with the team from Limerick as they trail by 16 points. I guess, Matt, as a coach, Tommy Walsh's goal over this last three minutes of the third quarter is try to get it to single digits going into the fourth. Yeah, you see in these games, you know, anything can happen when the game's get close, got a foul call there. Trying to get some kind of level of consistent scoring just to give them a little bit of confidence and, and you see there the fast break is the difference you know it's been tough sledding the same for Kolosh Ali in this uh, second half but in broken up play they always get that chance to be able to score on the break and that, that's something that Laurel Hill haven't been able to do they've not been able to score on the fast break at all so neither free throw goes and Laurel Hill take back control of the ball it's, it's a deflection, leads to a run out layup. Laurel Hill do a good job though. And that's what you're talking about, Matt. You, you said in the first half that they may be disappointed with how easy some of the transition points were, but they fought back really hard there and made it difficult. And yeah. the, they end up getting a stop. Yeah, it's a good job, and it, it resulted in them getting two shots here as well. Klosh Gallagher in uh, team fouls, so the rebound and the foul. Again, yeah, th there's been no shortage of, of, of effort from both sides, to be honest, but defensively, been good from both teams as that one's going to drop in. Nice bit of luck there. Yeah, Holly O'Neill doing a good job. And banks the second one in, so 28 to 14. It's only a 14 point game. Still a quarter and a bit to go in this game, so it's very much still all to play for. Yeah, and you see the confidence, nice sm smile from Holly O'Neill after the, the free throws. A bit of noise from the crowd, and I suppose if they could just string a couple of baskets together towards the close of this quarter, be a little bit more, and that's a little bit more aggressive with team fouls. They've got to try and get to the basket a little bit. 
We're going to have um, Dickinson again. Puts on the floor. Good rebound, though. And there we go. So quick four points in succession. The captain's work there by Yana Zundel, who we've talked about a few times in this uh, second half. And we're down to a 12-point game. So big offense here. Is there a response from Klaus Alling? There isn't. A good contest. They did a good job. And they're out to the races here. So a fast break. Good contest on the break. But there we go again. So six unanswered points for Laurel Hill. Holly O'Neill yet again. She's had four of those six. It's down to a 10-point game. 118 to go. Ooh, very yeah. lucky there with the kickball. <laughs> and you see Laurel Hill. I was going to time out here, so we'll let them talk it over. So 10 point game, 1.15 to go in the third quarter here, the under 19B Pinergy All-Ireland Schools Cup final. Klosh Alec lead Laurel Hill from Limerick and it's Klosh Alec from ball from the baseline. So it'll be interesting to see what they drew up in the timeout. They're gonna have a pass to the baseline. Doesn't fall. But Laurel Hill can't control the rebound. This will be a huge three, doesn't go, and there, Laurel Hill suddenly are struggling for rebounds. Another opportunity, but this time they do get the ball. Dickinson has it, she has her head up. She couldn't find her teammate who was out uh, to the races there. So 47 uh, seconds to go. A score here would take the single digits for the first time in a long time. And there we go, so Yana Zendel, the captain yet again, she's had a big impact here. That's an 8-0 run. Holly O'Neill and Yana Zundel combined for four points apiece in that 8-0 run. Yeah, and a big bit of confidence from, uh, from Laurel Hill. You see the, the double team in Sharon Cannon off the ball, but it's been more this. It's been more their willingness to, to attack a little bit more, and that's confidence can do that to you. Their, their confidence is up a little bit more. You saw Zundel last, uh, last play with that nice step suit. So that they weren't, weren't, I mean, they were struggling to get the ball even into them early on in the game. So, the ball game are now at least with 14 seconds to go in the quarter. Yeah, so it should be the final shot of the quarter here for Lyle Hill. A, sh a score here would lift the roof in the National Basketball Arena. Zundel has it, does go in. It's on the floor, it's going to be end of the quarter. So, going into the final quarter, Klaus Alec lead Lyle Hill 28 20. We'll be back in a minute.
So welcome back. We've got eight minutes to go in the under 19B Kinergy All Ireland Schools Cup. As you said before, if you're watching, tag Basketball Ireland on social media. Use hashtag Pinergy Schools Cup to be involved in the conversation. Matt, 12 to 2 in that third quarter for Laurel Hill. Really good defense, and that's what's uh, brought them back into this game. Yeah, next score is huge. You see them double teaming again. I suppose the, the one frustration, again, great defense that time down, is they're a little bit uncomfortable sometimes in double teaming. Uh, Sean Cunningham, I think that, I mean, that's definitely what's needed for them to come back into the game, but confidence offensively has also been the main factor in getting them back into the game. But it, it'll be interesting to see these next few minutes because eight points isn't really that close if you think about it, but it certainly seems like there'll be some difference uh, in what Kloshta Alec do in the next minute or two if they don't get a score, but that's a nice move inside, a nice yeah, finish, that will settle the nerves a little bit. Lovely finish inside there by Sean and Lee Wigan. Wigan. So a great answer and a 10 point game now. And I guess Matt, what you're talking about there is an eight point game if the scores are up in the 70s is one thing, but when it, it is low scoring, an eight point or a 10 point game as we have it now, seems like a much bigger thing. Yeah, I mean, if you, if, it, if you go by the first half, an eight point game is almost insurmountable. But that third quarter, all of a sudden, Laurel Hill found a way to speed the game up a little bit, get to the basket, get some offensive rebounds. And that's five fouls. Yeah, so that's the fifth foul of the day on Kaylee Nikengusa, who's had some excellent contributions. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier, Connor, that she was on four fouls, but I don't think the coaches or, or I don't think anyone in the, in the arena realised it as they're just questioning below. So there will be a sub here for Kalash Alec. But they have rotated in everybody already, Matt, which is a big advantage when you have to bring in someone uh, in the fourth quarter. So that someone is Claude Nishiro, and who we've already seen in this game. So it's a big advantage of uh, having everybody involved already. Yeah, and they did play some good basketball whilst they were out there too. So it wasn't like they, uh, they, they capitulated during that period. They played really well in that period as well and, and even extended the lead a little bit. So it shouldn't affect them too much. It's aggressive uh, defense there by Josh Alec. It's going to be a long three. Just doesn't fall. And it's going to be Josh Alec who pushed the ball. And the foul's drawn. Again, that's kind of what I'm talking about there. They, they've committed to, to stopping Sean Cunningham getting the ball, but not as much as they perhaps could do. I mean, there's two players there, but just I really like to see them stopping her getting the ball at all and seeing uh, how it goes. But certainly um, in Shauna, I won't give the second name of Posh, but, but she's certainly been really good as a, you know, o o almost as a second offensive uh, threat for Klosh Alling. And Matt, how difficult is it when, uh, particularly at underage level, when you're coming up against really talented individual players, it's not something that happens every week, so <laughs> the idea of doubling someone off the ball is not, it's something that's fairly alien to a lot of players, it's only when you actually have to do it that you're, you're experiencing it for the first time probably. Yeah, you can see there's a real reluctance from, uh, from a Laurel Hill players to really do it, they're not sure whether, whether they should be doing it, and they're not sure to be doing it aggressively, I suppose. As we've all seen, as a, that's why you do a great pass and great finish. But it really takes a certain type of individual to be that kind of dogged defender that's just not going to let anyone catch the ball, and that's not most basketball players. Certainly not me. So it's 32-20. A good response here by Clash Alec to start the fourth quarter. They've already scored more in this quarter than they scored in the third quarter. So Laurel Hill need to hit an outside shot soon if they're going to find a way to keep this momentum going but instead it's a turnover and this could be a big one here as the Quinnigan takes it to the basket nice finish with her left and it's going to be a timeout on the floor as the lead is extended back up to 14 with 5.42 to go
So welcome back, 542, Laurel Hill. Have five minutes and a half to try and get this back. If they're gonna find a way to win the under 19B All-Ireland Schools title at the moment, it's Clash Alling from Letterkenny who are in control. Good defense there. And it leads to a turnover and it leads to a steal. So great work by Sinead Nikatsor. And again by her. And Shannon Quinnigoyne is going to head the line for a chance to extend that lead. But that all came from the dogged defensiveness of Sinead. Yeah, and, and in this third quarter, they've really stepped up their defense. Laurel Hill finished the, the quarter out with, uh, I think, a 6-0-8-0 run. And gained a little bit of confidence, but that's really been shut down since the start of this quarter when they've really picked up their defense and uh, it's been very difficult for any open shots. So, McQuinn are going knocks down too. And Matt, sometimes even when we're doing commentary in these schools games, it can be difficult that when, when there's a player who's obviously very talented who plays National League and different things and they score a lot of points a lot of the attention goes their way but Clash Alec are really <laughs> really well coached a really solid group of players as you touched on they were able to bring in the second unit who equally were able to do their jobs really well and it, it's not just a one person team No there's been absolutely no let up on defence the whole time you see very few gaps in that zone they're all well drilled at the front and the back of the zone you know, and even I think Sean kind of sat, sat out for probably six to eight minutes there, and uh, they didn't really cut in, cut into the lead at all at that point. You know, they, they haven't shot as well as they would like to, I think, same as both teams, but certainly they've looked well capable and, and defensively, they've just not given up anything easy for the whole game. Yeah, they have a 16 point lead as their reward for that. And there is a big three for Laurel Hill. That's Holly. O'Neill, who's had a big impact, Matt, in this second half. I think that's her seventh point in the second half. And that's what had, uh, Laurel Hill needs more of, and they've needed it throughout the game. Yeah, she's played well, and she's open again here now. Be interesting to see where this one goes. Just a bit long, but good rebound. No, but I mean, that, that turned really, not necessarily just the way back into them, but just the way they had to play. They were never going to be able to get up and down as fast as uh, Colossia Alley have done, but... Making jump shots is important, but it's been it's been tough from the jump, and that's a great uh, great move yeah, from uh, Zundel. Yeah, Captain Yana Zundel yet again, another person. It's really been the the duo of Zundel and O'Neill who, with a little bit of Dickinson throughout in the second half in particular, who've really led the charge for Laurel Hill. They trail by 11 points though. The kind of going unselfishly shares the ball. It's going to be an offensive rebound and there's bodies on the floor I think she's fouled by her own player there she bundled into her <laughs> and knocked it down so it's ruled that it's on Yana Zundel which will be her fourth foul of the game so the Quinnigoyne heads to the free throw line for an opportunity to extend this lead yeah and you saw then just like Laurel Hill were aiming to double team and not let not let Cunningham catch the ball but just not quite able to be forceful enough in order to make sure she doesn't catch it and you know once she's got it she's been excellent throughout the game and, and the dominant force in the game so 13 point lead and a steal there she read that well right, we touched upon it though already it's if you take out the transition points Laurel Hill were right there. It's been a very even game, similar on both ends. They've both done a good job packing in the defense, trying to force stuff from outside. There hasn't been a lot of outside shooting, so transition and uh, really transition through the Quinnigoyne has been the big difference in the game. Yeah, it, it, it really has. I mean, I mean, early on it was a bit more than that because the lead was stretched and, and Laurel Hill were really struggling to score. But since that, that that third quarter when they really started to find their way a little bit more now it's it's been up and down and and, and a 13 point game it's been 10 been eight so the fast break points have really been the difference and and for Laurel Hill I suppose it's, it's a bit of a learning curve for them in terms of how aggressive they are defensively when they're given a plan in place um, but also it's, it's a blueprint for what we see in a lot of these cup finals that you've got to just shoot the ball you know got to shoot the ball be aggressive and another good aggressive move that time it's not always going to be your day but yeah, 
didn't fall on one end for Dickinson and Nequina going to we'll head back to the free throw line. So she heads the free throw line. First one's good. The crowd have traveled down from Letterkenny. Are pleased with that. The big worry in this game, Matt, is that Niall McDermott is already texting us both, taking credit for everything that's happening on, out on the floor, which I think everybody in that part of the country would obviously disagree with. Yeah, he's quite pleased with himself at the moment, but uh, you touched on it earlier, Connor. Uh, uh, Linda and Keith below us just done an excellent job in coaching, and, and you can see that just the way they play, um, you know, just their positioning. They've, they've uh, made very few mistakes, and the spacing, and again, and again, we see just offensively their spacing has been excellent throughout. Yeah, lots of good performances all around, good patience. Nice move inside. And that's probably the move of the game there for Shannon Quinnigoyen. Yeah, fabulous move, and that's, you know, she's been the class above throughout, but that's, that's exceptional. And when you do look at it, that's the difference. It, it can look a little bit slower when, uh, when, there's, uh, when there's players of really high talent, they're able to see those little gaps, whereas when other players attack into a crowded area, it can be difficult for them to find those little seams to attack. Yeah, and in, in, in Division 1, she's playing against experienced players, Americans, foreign players even a couple of internationals playing in division one this year so you know she's used to playing that speed every single week so uh, as you say the game would really seem a lot slower to her for this particular game so it, it's given her a great opportunity on the fast break she's really been uh, almost unstoppable Rachel Alfred checks into the game and she's going to check in for her captain, Yana Zundel. So, Matt, as Zundel checks out of the game, she really did a, a huge amount of hard work and then got some points on the board in the second half as a reward. Uh, but really, really fought hard throughout. Yeah, good captain performance. Got a lot of rebounds, blocked a few shots. She says second half, able to find the score in touch a little bit and she can be, uh, she can be very proud of her performance today. So, Claude de Chiron hits both free throws there as we have a... Substitution as Soda checks out of the game after those successful free throws, and Aoife Numakeda checks back into the game. And Matt, even a 19 point lead with under two minutes to go, and the, the defense is still right there with the same tenacity that it's been th throughout the entire game. Yeah, and you can see, even we, we talked about a little bit of Laurel Hill's reluctance to really double team hard, but you see there from Colossal Alley, just, just when they go to double team, they go arms straight up, put real pressure on, and there's no way out of that double team and a good turnover. And again, just, just I suppose that, that's been the difference in them, as well as Cunningham, that, that level of aggressive defence. So 120 to go in the under 19 B Pinergy All Ireland Schools Cup final. That's a lovely move inside by Dickinson again. So it's really been that trio of Dickinson alongside Holly O'Neill and Yana Zundel who've done a brilliant job offensively for Laurel Hill, but there just hasn't been enough throughout the game and that's a lot of contact, but a good job by Laurel Hill to stand up. So we're under a minute to go here with the under-19B All-Ireland Schools Cup Final. It doesn't fall, and potential rebound, but instead it comes out for... Flash out, but they don't capitalise on it. So, Matt, just on reflection, Laurel Hill, a good effort from them, but the superior team of the day definitely uh, have come out on top. Yeah, I think Laurel Hill can be very pleased with themselves. There was a, a patch in that end of first quarter, second quarter where you fear for them a little bit but they've certainly showed why they're in the final but in uh, that layup there and in Sharon Cunningham you see the big difference in the two teams overall just a really dominant performance which you know we, we've mentioned how good Colostralig have been on defence and offence and how well coached they've been 
But when you've got a player like that that puts the ball in the basket and, and relieves the pressure when you've got a long time without scoring, it just gives you that much more confidence that you know at any point during the game she can stack up four, six, ten quick points. Um, Megan, the Kermacoin comes on to finish out the game as Annie Nicola Intug takes a break and it's a steal from Clash to Alec and a fast break layup. And that's the perfect way to cap out the under 19B All Ireland Schools Cup final as Clash to Alec from Letterkenny have won the Pinergy All Ireland Schools Cup. Commiserations to Laurel Hill and congratulations to Clash to Alec. We'll stay with you here in the National Basketball Arena for the pre presentation of the trophy and MVP, which will happen in just a moment.